What up? And welcome to another episode of From the Script to the Screen. And welcome to the My Hero edition of From the Script to the Screen. Episode 17 of season 6 is out, covering chapters 301, 2, and 3 of the manga of volume 31. As always, I like to show y'all the cover. <clears throat> and before getting into anything, as always, my first disclaimer, I like to say, make sure you watch the episode before anything. Might discuss a couple spoilers. I don't want to spoil anything. But for this week, I would say trigger warning, special disclaimer for anybody who's ever been a victim of, I would say, uh, either domestic abuse or um, abusive households, abusive parents. Um, some of the things in this week could have been a little triggering. Shout out to Studio Bones. I think they did a great job of portraying the emotion from the panels to this week's episode. Um, wasn't really expecting it to be so intense, but I think they did a great job again with the music, especially with the facial expressions this week. So dope episode, shout out to them. And let's get into it. Going along with what I was saying, The episode starts off with Dobby, and as we know by now, um, Dobby is somebody whose body's been through a lot the past couple years, and we know that his body is basically burnt all over, but I enjoyed the beginning of the episode because it showed some of the repercussions that he does go through. When I saw the panel, when I read this chapter in the beginning, I didn't um, necessarily understand or think that it was blood. We see in the episode that he's actually kind of crying blood. So we see that, um, I wouldn't, or maybe he's not crying blood, but we do see that he's bleeding after effects of the fight and all of that. Like he said, <clears throat> his body, uh, he's kind of been keeping himself together just to go through this moment. So, so we kind of see him relishing the fact and just kind of thinking over everything that happened and reminiscing on his, childhood which is what basically we see in the episode now well i like to say shout out to studio bones because i think they just did a great job of portraying the todoroki the todoroki family's issues and just um i guess you could say just how intense the whole quirk factor was what endeavor was actually trying to pull off the um the atmosphere of the household and it was cool seeing just the differences in the children and just what was going along starting off with Toya who is Dobby we see that when he's a young kid that you know he has red hair similar to Endeavor and has the blue eyes but we see that he has some slights of white hair similar to his mother and then we come to find out that even though his fire is stronger than Endeavor and has the potential to be greater than Endeavor. He kind of mimics more of his mother and he's more suitable to cold temperatures, which is why he, he hurts himself using his quirk and kind of why as the episode goes along, you see that his hair starts to turn white, which I thought was pretty cool to actually see in the episode. With the sister being born, the sister is exactly like the mother, barely has red hair has her mother's eyes and who I, who I would assume has no type of fire association, doesn't really have any type of fire breaks quirk. Same with the brother. We see the brother also resum resembles the mother exactly, white hair, um, gray eyes, black eyes, no type of resemblance to Endeavor, leading us to something that I enjoyed seeing was the birth of the young Todoroki. Like you guys saw in the episode, uh, he was the perfect, the perfect child, a perfect mix of both of them. Half red hair, half white hair, blue eyes, well, blue eye, gray eye. So you can see that he was um, you know, the perfect child, the perfect combination of both quirks, 
a uh, perfect combination of both parents. It was funny to see also <laughs> when baby Todoroki was sleeping that he had a, a ice bubble <laughs> so we could see that he was able to use ice and we know that he's gonna be able to use fire because he had red hair and of course we see later on. And it was also something resembling, um, something ironic to me because we know just how much Todoroki hated his fire side until he fights Deku. So it was funny to see that it was something that was engraved in him since early, in my opinion. <laughs> but why I also wanted to give the trigger warning in the beginning of the episode is because after this is when we start to see some of the violent side of Endeavor. We start to see more of the, um, I would say the more ugly side of Endeavor. He became obsessed with, uh, with Shoto, obsessed with Todoroki because he felt that he would be the type of kid that could surpass All Might. We also see just how obsessed he was with hero work and All Might in general. All he wanted to do when he was young was really train and he was focused on All Might and focused on trying to make Todoroki stronger. And we see that he ended up neglecting the other kids and just neglecting his household in general. And we see that he was abusive toward his, towards his wife, someone that didn't really deserve it, but we know that Endeavor had some, di some deeper issues himself and just took it out on anybody that was, that was around him, which is some of the things he's trying to work on now. You see here, um, Toya became somewhat jealous of his younger brother because he felt like he would be neglected by his father. Now being that he can't necessarily pursue the career of being a hero, he felt like he would be thrown away and he just wanted to prove to his father that he'd still be able to, you know, use his quirk and become what he wanted. You know, somebody that could be stronger than All Might, somebody that'd be able to be a great hero. And we see that uh, Davi, young Toya, tried to hurt Shoto and his somewhat outburst and just um, not being able to control his emotions. And due to that, after that event, we see that Endeavor kind of decided to keep the kids separate, wanted to make sure that um, Shoto was focused on his hero work and just working on his quirk and let the kids be kids, not have to do anything with this whole hero world that Endeavor was obsessed with, which is what led to the events up on the mountain. You know, during these five years and Dobby going through puberty and just becoming more of a man, his quirk um, upgraded itself, became stronger, which is why they always mention that Dobby does have stronger fire than Endeavor. That's why his fire is blue. His fire upgraded when he matured. And that's why he kind of had no control over the the flames that he was producing when he got worked up at the mountain and untimely what they thought was his demise. But like I said, shout out, shout out to Studio Bones. They did a great job this week of just portraying the emotion and just um, setting the tone for the Todoroki residents and why it was such a mess, why you know it was such an unhealthy situation for everybody in there. We know that Todoroki's mother has been in the hospital since the series started. And we know that in, um, Endeavor and Todoroki didn't have the best relationship when the series started. So we see why and we see how they've overcome that and are trying to progress and become better. So shout out to them as a family trying to do better. And the episode kind of ends on that tone. We still we see that Deku is still out for the count, but... Something that I'm looking forward to next week, as you guys might have seen in the preview, but there's a lot of answers that will be revealed next week. You guys are kind of start to understand more of what exactly is going on, so I'm looking forward to it. But let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Let me know what y'all think about what's coming next week. And that's it, man. Peace. <laughs>